As a trainer, have you ever felt nervous or uncomfortable during a training session? Have you been up the night before worried that you won't know the answers to your trainee's questions or that your class will be uninterested or even bored with the material? Hi, I'm Jason Tiedek with Rule the Room and I help trainers shine in front of their classroom. In my new trainer bootcamp program, I'm going to show you how to erase those concerns and become a master trainer that can motivate adult learners and maximize learning and retention. First, I want to thank you for signing up for our newsletter. In addition to receiving our monthly newsletter filled with tips and tricks to help you rule the room, you'll also receive exclusive offers and discounts on our training courses. And if you keep watching, you'll get an exclusive taste of one of the most powerful, complete, and easy to learn train the trainer programs out there. This 14 hour boot camp dives deeply into the strategies, techniques, and tools you need to be an effective trainer. In this program, you'll learn everything we know about adult learning. You will not only discover how to motivate adult learners, keep them interested, deal with challenging or disgruntled participants, and maximize learning, you'll actually do it yourself. Over the next 20 minute crash course, you'll get a small taste of what you can expect. Make sure to stay until the end of this video for an exclusive discount on the entire Trainer Bootcamp course. Thanks and enjoy the course. I'm going to show you how to make an impressive first impression. Now the first impression that you're going to make is even before class starts. Most people think that their first impression is when they start class. That's not the case. You're going to make an impression before class. We've just finished small talk. Class is going to start in five minutes. And what you're going to do is four things. You're going to find your sweet spot, find the right distance from the front row. I'm going to teach you about your stance today with your feet and your hands and your eyes and your shoulders. And then how to determine that stance and then practice eye contact with that stance. We're all going to practice this right now. But before we do, you need to figure out which ones you want. You're going to write those down in these boxes. So on page 32, you'll notice on page 32 and 33 there's no actual boxes because there's no words you have to write down, but I want you to circle what you like the best. I'm going to start with on page 32, the sweet spot. Now you'll notice on page 32 there's, there's three different paragraphs there under position yourself in the sweet spot that there is one specific key for the sweet spot. I'm doing the sweet spot right now. It's the place that's equidistant in the room between all the people. What you want to do is look at your room and draw an imaginary line right down the middle of all of your students. And you want to straddle that line when you teach. That's where you stand. That's called the sweet spot. The other key about the sweet spot is you want the sweet spot to be between 5 and 10 feet from the front row of students. You'll notice that there are no students here and here in this boardroom. There are no students here. If there were, me standing here would be very awkward for them. I'm about one foot from this. I'm, it's fine right here. This is what I've been doing all day with you because Melody is about five, ten feet from me. But if there were students here, I'd probably want to stand right here to make these two feel more comfortable. When I get too close, they feel awkward. I'm going to suggest in a small room that you be five feet from the front row and in a large room of large number of students, 10 feet. Last week I gave a presentation in front of 100 people. I was 10 feet from the front row. The sweet spot is the place right down the middle. So that's the distance. Right, right now I want you to figure out what your sweet spot's going to be, where your distance is going to be, and now here comes the stance. You ready? There's a couple of different stances you can do. The stance I've been doing is the one where my feet are shoulder width apart, and when I'm not making a point, my hands are to my sides. This is one choice. Another one is one foot's pointed towards the audience, one foot is at a 45 degree angle, the weight is on my back foot, and my hands are gently clasped at my abdomen. The third one is the same stance with my hands to my sides. Now some of you are going to look at this and say, either way, Jason, my hands are going to feel awkward. Well, what are my other choices with my hands? I can do the T-Rex. Right? which doesn't feel good for anybody because this implies there's a buffer between me and you. But a lot of people do this because they are afraid. And this, by the way, shows your audience something. What does it show them? I need this buffer between you and me. 
Remember how it's not whether you're nervous, it's whether you what? This is a way to show nerves right here. Here's another way to show nerves. Hands in pockets. You know, so what does this imply subconsciously to you? I'm hiding something. What about hands behind back? What's this imply? Same thing. What I want to do is I want to keep my, I want to stand still when I first start. I want my hands either to the side or gently clasped at my abdomen. And I want my, my feet either shoulder width apart or weight on my back foot in one pointed 45 degrees like this. Write down right now what you want your stance to be. Write it on page 33. Choose the stance that you want and circle it. You'll see those stances written out for you on 33, but pick the one that you want and write that down now. Now while you're doing that, let's talk about your eyes. On page 33 at the bottom, it says, if you have a small audience, please underline this. I define a small audience as any group of 32 or fewer. If you have less than 30 people, write this down. You can give each person a half a second of eye contact every minute. You should know I've been doing that with each of you. I'm giving you each a half a second of eye contact every minute. Most trainers, when they hear this, because this is that whole practical rule the room thing where we actually teach you exactly what to do and why to do it, they hear it and they say, whoa, this changes everything because they had no idea. But if you have a large group, if it's a large audience, I would give each section of the room eye contact for three seconds, then I'd move to another section of the room. Remember, left, middle, right, front, middle, back. Nine sections, everyone gets three seconds. You should know, if I just give three seconds of, of, of eye contact right now to one person, let, look at what happens when I do this with my sheet right now. I give one, three seconds of eye contact to the sheet. Isn't that awkward? Or if I, if I give it to one person, three seconds in a small room, how does that feel? It's very awkward. So it needs to be half of a second and it starts to make people feel safer. Remember, it's not about us, it's about our what? Our trainees, our audience. It's called the Agree and See If You're Right and it's on page 118 that I'm going to teach you in this chapter. And if you could make a note on the top of 118, just write this. This is the number one technique of engagement, in my opinion, on the planet. There is no better way to engage a group of people than this technique. And I'm going to prove it to you right now by engaging you, all of you. Here's what it looks like. I'm going to do it with you first, and then I'm going to tell you what I did so that you can feel it. Here's what I'd like you to do. I want you all to take 30 seconds right now. Take out a pen and a piece of paper. And I want you to write down just on your own quietly why, what you think is the number one reason why people don't listen to trainers. Write that down now. Describe in, in your own words why you think people don't pay attention to trainers. Why are they not engaged? Take 30 seconds and write that down now. Now, turn to the person next to you and agree on the reason why you think people you have to agree on why you think people don't listen to trainers. Why? Good. Now take a moment and I want you to assign one of the pre people in your group to be the relayer. Relayers, you need to tell us what you came up with. You got your relayer? Okay, relayers, what do you got? Um, Kelly? They think it's not relevant to them, so they have no what's in it for what? What's in it for me? Relayer over here, what'd you come up with? The content's not relevant. So both of you said it's not relevant. Interesting. So there was one right answer. You'd never been taught it before. You could figure it out, and it required what? Thinking. Oh, look up here. Here are the three steps to the agree and see if you're right. You tell them to write an answer to a leading question and give them 30 to 60 seconds. Exact, and you have to tell them exactly. You don't say you can have 30 to 60. You say either 30 or 60. I gave you 30. Then. You tell them to agree with the person next to them and assign one of them the relayer and then they get to see if they're right. This will engage any group of people on the planet instantly. If you have a bunch of people in your room that aren't listening to you, use the agree and see if you're right, they're back. Just like that. Why? Why is this so powerful? Listen to this. I want you to take a look on page 120 and I want you to read something with me. 
It says, as you do this, you have recaptured their attention in the process. Your class members will have learned either the actual answer that you give at the end or what the rest of the peers think about that answer. Here's the best part. I was working with a trainer named Anthony, and here's what he said. He said, when he first tried this, he said, I was astonished. Here's this quote. Even the very reticent and closed off folks leapt right into the discussion. I've seen groups of up to a thousand people erupt in conversation with this tool, which works for any topic, and it works anytime you feel the class is drifting away, as often as how many times an hour? You can use this three times an hour. You do it, and they're back. Why is it working? Look up here. Let's review. Here comes recall questions. What's this quadrant called for the learning styles? That's the step learner. And what do they like? They like the specific recipe for what they're supposed to do. What's the opposite called? The create learner. What do they like? They want to come up with their own steps. What's this one called? The talk learner. What do they like to do? Talk in order to, you should know, there's a lot of people that are not interpersonal people that are talk learners and vice versa. I have a friend who is a manager at a company and he is extremely interpersonal. His employees love him. He's very easy to talk to, very extroverted, but when he learns, he goes into a room, he grabs a book, and he wants no one around him. I have another friend that is not interpersonal at all. Very, this is not a, I would not have this, and she knows this, she's not a, a team leader at all, but she loves to talk to get it. Here's the thing, now watch this. Look at these three steps, because this is so powerful. But you might be wondering, where did this come from? I created this strategy from scratch. This isn't something I learned from anybody. I created it after watching these thousands of trainers. And what I discovered is that there are only, there's really only one technique that all four of these like. It's the agree and see if you're right. Watch this. When I tell them to write down an answer to a leading question on their own, which learner loves that? Let's look at number step one, step two, step three, and I'm gonna put these steps, one, two, or three, in each of these quadrants as we see them happen. Which learner loves the fact that they get to write their own answer and, and, and on their own? The create learner loves this. And which learner loves the fact that they don't have to talk about it with anybody right now? So these two love number one. They get to spend some time thinking about it and creating it on their own. Number two, then they have to turn to the person next to them and they have to agree on an answer. Who loves this one? Who's like, oh, I get to talk. Yeah, the talk learner's love in number two. And by the way, it turns out that the research learner loves to agree after they've become an answer, after they've researched it, which is the 30 seconds, right? Okay, by the way, who has not gotten their need met yet? The step. What does the step really just want? They just told me the answer. I just want to know the answer. But what does Bloom, the educational psychologist, say about this? Even the step learner needs to what? Starts with a synth and ends with the thighs? Synthesize. Synthesize. So if you look at step three, what happens in step three when I say, okay, relayers, what'd you come up with? And by the way, relayers, the talk learner is probably gonna be the one that relays, right? So they get another hit there. But the step learner comes back in step three and says, oh, I'm right. If you're a step learner, you probably were so excited when I said that making it related to you is in fact the answer. Now, you might say to yourself, interesting, not really compelling yet. Let's make this really compelling. Watch this. It turns out that there really is only one thing that the research learner and the talk learner love to do together. They both want to agree. Because these people they don't like to talk to learn, but they're happy to talk after they've researched it. And these people love to talk anytime. So the talk learner comes up to the research learner and says, hey, want to talk? And the researcher goes, no. And then the talk, the talk learner comes later on after the research learner's read the book and say, hey, want to talk about the book now? And what do you think the research learner says? Okay. okay. So they love to agree. And then these two, look at these two. Even though this person wants the steps right away and this person wants to figure their own steps out, they both want to know if they're right. right. Ding, ding, ding. There it is. The agree and see if you're right 
there is no power, more powerful technique that I know of to train effectively and make sure everybody's engaged. And what's more, since it's a leading question, not only are they engaged, they're understanding now because you made them think. And they got paid three times, four times over with the agree, and these people get to see if they're right. Here's the thing, you want to get applause, you need to do two more things. And most trainers don't know this. They think they just end the class. Hey, thanks for coming, or they hand out chocolates and hope everybody's happy. But that's not good enough. What you need to do is remind them what they got. And, and pay, look at this, administer an oral review, that starts to remind them what they got, but now you're gonna flat out tell them what they got. And most trainers say, well, don't they know what they got? We already taught it for two days. No, no, you need to remind them what they got. And on page 236, you'll notice, highlight this with me, that there's two bullets at the bottom of the page. You see those? You start with what they got, and then you end with the best one, which is what? Why they wanted it. So we're gonna do step one. To remind them what they got, this is big, you're gonna first summarize the takeaways and the class hook by showing them on page 237 a list of the takeaways. Check this out. I would show these takeaways right here. I would say, I would show these with my PowerPoint and then I would say the following thing. You ready? This is what the John the physician trainer said. You just learned nine ways to get more face time with patients and spend less time documenting by easily finding information on the patients, getting them what they need with your orders, and writing your notes more efficiently. He's saying this as they're doing what? reading. Here's what I might do with you. I would look at my agenda and say, you just learned 135 new techniques that you can use tomorrow to better engage your students, help them follow along and understand more effectively, increase your retention, and handle even the most challenging trainees. Hear that? Hear how powerful that is? Here's what you want to do. In order to do this, on page 230 eight. What I'd like you to do <clears throat> is two things. It all has to be in one sentence. Look at this sentence from John's again. Notice he's telling them what they got, nine ways to, and then he's telling them in the red what? Why they wanted it. So what happens is when you show them the takeaways, you show them all these things up here, they're all looking at them. When you summarize these, you need one statement, one statement that has the what plus the why, all wrapped up into it. And you say that statement and you have that memorized. And that's what we're gonna practice right now. But first, you need to write that statement on page 238. I want you to write a statement right now that summarizes what they get and how many things they got, if it's nine, 12, whatever it is in your training, and why they wanted it all in the same statement. And if you're saying to yourself, huh, I don't remember how to do this. I don't remember what mine was. You can actually look back in your book on page 44. If you look on 44, you will see 45 actually and 46 and oh, it's 40, 47. Page 47 is the box with your class hook. You can just use that if you want. All you do is you just restate it with how many things they got. So if my class hook is, I'm going to save you time, I'm going to say, you just learned nine things that will save you time. If my class hook is, you're going to be more happy in your life, you just learned 12 things that will make you more happy in your life. Go ahead and write those down now. You should know that when we're all done with this, this just this chapter, I'm going to model this for you. I'm going to model the end of the class by doing a role review with you, telling you and reminding you what and why you had it and then doing this last section in a second. But before I do, I'd like to hear somebody's. Who would like to read theirs and practice this out loud? Those of you who are watching the video, you should stop the tape right now and practice this out loud with each other. But I want to hear one from you all first. Go ahead and tell me what you'd say after your oral review. You just learned what? Who wants to do it? Nice. Awesome why. What did she forget? The number of things. How many things did you teach them? Oh, okay. 
Try it again, and this time say the number of things. You just learned blank things that will, and then insert what you have. You just learned nine things about the opposite diversity and inclusion and why it's important to our patients. Good. You just learned nine techniques related to the Office of Diversity and, conclusion, and Inclusion and why it's important to our patients. Fantastic. Let's hear one more. Maithali? You just put the number of ways as well. Yeah. So you just learned seven ways of using the tool to manage your initiatives effectively and efficiently that will help you improve your operational performance and bridge your budget. Wow. Read, the, read it to me slowly so I can get it to say it back. You just learned seven ways that will what? Seven ways of using the tool to of, manage your initiatives. Of using the tool to manage your initiatives effectively, effectively and efficiently. That will help you improve your performance and bridge the budget gap. Now here, let me tell you what I like about each of yours. Tyra, what I love about yours is that you can say it and remember it easily. It's short enough to do that. Mithley, you might want to take that cue. Shorten it up a little bit because otherwise you may have a hard time remembering that. What I like about yours though, Mithley, is that you have the opportunity to say things. Those last sentence you said had some words in there that were really why compelling. Did you all feel that? That's powerful stuff.